But I like getting out here early, setting it up, and just waiting. This is very much like hunting, so all the hunters out there, you'll understand exactly what's going on. So there's the slit kind of going out. You can see the little pieces of, uh, of chum kind of drifting off the boat. The current's pushing us this way, which is towards shore, which is great. Let me get rigged up. So the basic rig I use is a 14 weight fly rod, eight foot six. All right, a very big saltwater reel. It holds 600 yards of 30 pound Dacron backing. It's got a great drag system and, that, and that's critical because a lot of these fish are super strong. When they run, Here he goes. You know, you've got to adjust the drag throughout the duration of the fight. And, and the most critical part of the drag is at the end game. When they're at the boat, you want to pick, hold those fish at the boat and having a really good drag to where you can do that is critical. This rod's got a little bit of an extended fighting butt on it. Because when you're fighting these fish, you want that rod like right here. So you can create maximum pressure on this fish. So now we've got a floating line. I like using floating lines all the time. And the reason why I do that is because it keeps the fly up on the surface. I don't get technical on leaders. You don't have to get technical on leaders. I use straight 30 pound mono with a loop to loop connection. And then this, the tag end of the 30 pound, is going to go to my steel leader system or bite, bite tippet system. So the dynamic is this, I'm being hunted. You know, I'm setting the slick and they're hunting me down, which is kind of weird if you think about it. There's nothing like that in, in fly fishing. I mean, when you're on a trout stream, you're not being hunted by a brown trout, right? I mean, these things are hunting you down. And mako sharks do not tire out. When you fish sharks, you need a bite tippet. And I use single strand stainless steel wire. So single strand is great. It's sort of like dental floss. It fits neatly between the shark's teeth. And this is 86 pound test. So I get about a three and a half foot piece. That's it right there. And then I use a 10 odd hook, okay? I take the barb off the hook, I debarb all these hooks. When I release these fish, I want every opportunity to get that fish off that hook as soon as possible. So there's that, there's this. I do a thing called a haywire twist, and then you go like this. The key to haywire twisting is you want a good series of X wraps you kind of have to have strong hands to do this. So I do about eight of those. You need to take this tag in and you need to bend that to a 90 degree like this. And this is the most important part of, of the haywire twist, making a series of barrel wraps. Um, that will ensure that the X wraps don't come unraveled during the battle. There we go. And the battles that, that I'll be encountering here can be you know, up to an hour or more. So that's what it looks like. And you bend it like that, back and forth, back and forth. There it is. Now you've got a clean haywire twist with no sharp tag in it. The next step, take our fly. These are tube flies. So this, this fly here has no, no hook in it. So you take this and you run it up this little tube, hence the tube fly. Once you hook that mako shark, oftentimes that fly will slide up the leader like this. So now I only have to deal with a hook during the release. And then finally, the shark can't steal the fly or break the fly or destroy the fly. So I get to keep most of my flies. And one last thing, I put a little 50 pound tuna ring to the end of the stainless steel wire. So I do another haywire twist. And that way I can time a knot directly to this ring. Now, we'll take this, and I do a, just a basic clinch knot. You don't have to do anything more sophisticated than that. To tighten it down, I'll put the hook in a cleat like this, and I'll pull it. I'll pull it down like that. I'll, maybe I'll help it down, and I just make sure it's taut. And that's it.